Hi everyone. So at GDC, Epic announced and released the preview for Unreal Engine 5.4. And with that came a load of new features. And today I want to showcase one of those new features, which is the modular control rig. So I'm going to go through, explain how to set it up, and also how to make use of IK controls for arms and legs and the hip and start using it for animation purposes. Now this is just part one of a few videos I want to try and do with the modular control rig as I'm going to show off its full capabilities with this because it can be used for things other than skeletons like humanoids. So let's jump in and have a look at the basics of how modular control rig is set up and used. So we're going to get started creating our modular control rig. Now this is using Unreal Engine 5.4 preview. So if you are also using a preview, be aware it does tend to crash uh, now and then with these new tools. But to get started, you want to go into animation section and go down to control rig and select the control rig. The new thing here is now you're going to get an option between control rig and the new modular rig, which we're going to choose that one. And we'll call this one skeleton knight control rig. And open this up. And in here, the first thing you want to do is give it the preview mesh, which you see down here. Please choose a preview mesh. Click on this and choose a skeleton mesh. I'm going to choose the one I brought in earlier, like this. And as soon as you bring it in, it's going to add some basic stuff for you straight away. So you can see a root module in the module hierarchy down here has been added and it's got the connector to the root bone, hence the little bone icon. So the way this is set up, in the left-hand side, you've got the modular assets. These are the pre-built modules for the modular control rig. So here you see the arm, fingers, feet, and so on. The module hierarchy shows you how each of these bones and modules are connected together. And on the right-hand side, we've got a details panel, which, much like most details panels, will change based upon what we select. Then we have our compile button. So once you've put something in, it's good idea to compile it, and it'll make sure it's all okay. So when you first get started, you'll notice you've got one socket in here. And as you can see, it's suggesting that this is the spine socket. And drag and drop the spine module in here. And it's doing that, I'm guessing, based upon the name of the bone. So if your bones aren't named correctly, it may not tell you what it should be expecting. Um, so you're going to have to uh, go by the design of your model. So we can drag in our spine module. Now, I personally don't like the list here. I prefer in tile format. Makes it a little bit easier to read and I'll make them a little bit bigger as well. So let's put in our spine. So drag in our spine and let go. Now, every time you add a new module, it's going to give you more sockets to attach stuff to. The first thing you want to do though, before you get too far, is you just want to look over here on the module hierarchy and see how this is working. So, what it does is it gives you a spine start bone. It's indicated that it's spine zero one is the start bone. If this is incorrect, you can just click on the drop down and choose the correct bone it should be. And likewise, here's a spine end bone at spine 03. So if your bones haven't been named correctly or in bad naming convention, this is where you can fix that problem. And you also have uh, details about what controls there are as well. So you can see the pelvis bone has been set to pelvis, which is correct. And the parent controls are these things at the bottom down here. Global control, you've got body offset control, which is this in a square like one. Okay, so let's add more sockets onto this. So as you can see, if you hover your mouse over these ones, they also tell you what they should expect. So in this case, this one's expecting the shoulder module. So I'm going to go down to shoulder and drop that in. It's best to wait for it to highlight when you're dragging it in. So as you can see, if I drag it in, it goes sort of grayed out. Wait till it's sort of lit up and then let go and it will add it in. You get less errors like that. Uh, so let's put in the arms now. And as you can see, if you hover over it, it tells you it's going to expect the arm module. Like so. So another thing you'll notice is that it's auto coloring in the control rig uh, controls based upon the left and right hand side of the character. So left is blue, right is red. Also, you can customize this however you like, uh, but it's a nice little feature that helps keep things organized. Uh, and as we see when I've added the arms in, it's now adding all the fingers in. So let's just add those in here too. And it's literally just simply drag and drop. Again, wait for it to hover, highlight and turn white, then let go. And that way you guarantee it's going to land in the right spot. There you go. And the ones that have got this sort of double circle icon, 
this indicates there's something in there and you can always click on this and you can see what's connected to it so here we've got the bone this is the uh, end, end bone of the finger and this is the socket that it's identified okay and so it's figured it out for us it keeps it a bit organized you just click on it again it will close the little menu we will pop up let's do this side as well Notice how I'm waiting for it to highlight in white before I let go of the mouse. And you should see everything in here is all good. And there's no like red text anywhere, which is excellent. Okay, we're gonna hit compile. And that's the arms done. Now, you need immediately to get started, you'll notice if you were to grab the, the hip ring here, and pull this down it's going to go straight for the floor and that's because we haven't done the ik for the leg yet so let's set up the legs and so you can see that ik working so i'm going to drag in leg and attach it to each of those and wait for it to highlight there we go and then you've got your feet as well place foot there and place the foot there so now if I drag this down, you'll see the IK has already been added for the knee bones. And then the pole vectors, which are these sort of uh, lines coming out the knees here, indicate which way the knee should be bent. So if you find that there's a bit bow-legged like this, and you want to bring them in a bit closer, you can actually select these pole vectors and move them a bit closer to the center of the character. So I'm going to move them like that. And I'm going to go to this one. And move that one in like this and you'll notice now when the character bends their knees aren't bending out to the side anymore they're bending more dead straight down which is a bit better but you customize that however you want for your own model is it compile okay so that's the legs working but if the arms you will see here if i were to set the arms here oh, let me just close that and move this you'll notice that this is not arcade and that's because by default for whatever reason the arms are set up to use fk so to fix that what you would do is in your hierarchical uh, list here click on the arm and then on the right hand side this panel scroll down until you see the fk ik default turn that on when you do that it the control is going to change to this cube instead and now as i move this you'll see it's going to move the arm a lot more naturally much like these we've got a pole vector here which you can edit as well but there you go so let's do it for the other arm so i'm going to select the other arm again it's probably easier to select it from the list here if you don't want to accidentally click the fingers you want to make sure you get the arm itself and then go to fk ik default compile save so all we've got left here is the neck so let's just put in the neck bone there we go compile save perfect okay so that is the modular control rig setup now that's something that's really a lot quicker than the old-fashioned method of control rig doing it all by hand it would have taken hours this is now super quick and easy to put together and to use it what you got to do is just drag this into your scene and when you do so it's going to automatically go into the animation mode and there's a control rig all good to go and now i can move and animate the character probably turn off snap um freely in my scene and we can pull them down make them crouch and things okay now this is the very basics of module control rig we plan on doing a few more videos about how to hook it up so you get more constraints and a bit more control with the ik um but this is the very start of what we want to try and do with this um so yeah i look forward to more of that coming very very soon So there you have it, that is the modular control rig, a really cool new tool added in Unreal Engine 5.4. Now the UI and things might change by the time the release of 5.4 actually comes out fully, but if it does, I'll make an update video at that time. 
Now, if you like this video and want to see more videos about module control rig and other things, head to the patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley as we'll be exploring more about module control rig, some more of its options, and also how to use it to uh, create control rigs for things that are not just humanoids. So you can watch those episodes right now over on Patreon early before anyone else from just $1 a month. Thank you so much to all the patrons and YouTube members for the continued support in the channel. Thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.